to his wife. See that? Huh? And don't abandon her. Now, my friends, we can see this, can't we? We can see it clearly, right? That there are no in-betweeners here. But I mentioned to you earlier, I said homosexuality is an abomination. Well, what does that mean? I am so glad you're asking. Let's go to Leviticus. In Leviticus, let's go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter and the 22nd verse. Let's go there, please. Do you want to go heavier here? Well, we're going heavier now. Hold on to your seats here, okay? In Leviticus, the 18th chapter and the 22nd verse. Thy shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Listen, all you men out there, and men who will see this message on YouTube, wherever we have it, listen very carefully to what God is telling Moses. Thy shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Thy, thy mean you men, you see this? Shall not lie. You see that? Now, shall here, it denotes future tense, but it also denotes a law, a commandment of God. Thy shall not lie. Now, do you see the word that lie? Well, that word lie there now, it has several main meanings. And number one, that word lie means this. It means connect sexually with that's what it means. Thy shall not connect sexually with mankind. Mankind meaning with another man, with another man. As with mankind. As with here means in the same way you would a female, a woman. It is abomination. Let's go back to the word lie again. Thy shall not lie. Lie means also to sleep with or lay with. You see that? Men shall not lay with or sleep with another man. Mankind as with in the same way you would a female. It is abomination. Now we're gonna get now here we're gonna get very, very heavy here. And explain to you the meaning of the word abomination. Abomination here now, when you translate this particular word back from this original text, of course, which is a Hebrew text, you will find that it has several main meanings. Number one, abomination means a very bad sin. You see, homosexuality is a very bad sin. Another it also says, it is an enormous sin. Enormous sin. Why is it such a bad sin? An enormous sin? Because this sin hurts society in a very bad way. Which way is that, Pastor? Well, it goes against God's original design for man and woman. Satan is messing with God's original design that he has for man and woman. Satan is angry. He's upset. He's trying to get back at God. Uh, man is God's pride and joy upon the earth. Is that right, you all? Uh, God found delight in making man after he created the world. See? So Satan is trying to get back at God because God kicked him out of heaven, wouldn't let him control heaven. So he's angry. He has to get back spirit at God. So he says, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll corrupt your creatures, your pride and joy. And he knows that if he can get them into homosexuality, then he can take their souls to hell. And he can destroy the world. And he knows that he will hurt God in terms of replenishing the world. Why not? Because same-sex marriages cannot produce 
children. That's right. Amen. It cannot produce people. God wants people in heaven with him. So Satan said, I will stop it. I will stop God from having all these souls in heaven. I will simply put man with man, woman with woman. No babies will be born. No one can get saved. You see, are you all getting this? Because they weren't. In other words, they weren't being anyone here. My Lord. Are you all getting this? Yes. See, it is a very bad sin. I tell you what, let me substantiate to you further that it is a very bad sin. Everyone, let's go over to Genesis 18.20. Let's go over there, please. In Genesis 18.20 and 21 and 23. In Genesis 18.20. Now here's where I got in trouble at. With this word abomination. Okay? If you were to Google my name, you'll see something there that the media said about me that is totally wrong. Okay? But the way they twisted it, you see, because they were so busy trying to destroy me. Because the media doesn't like people like me. Okay? Because people like me stand for God's righteousness. We tell it like it is. We know what's happening. We have the heartbeat of God. See, they want to keep the people ignorant. So what they do is they say silly things about me in order to stop the people from taking what I say seriously. But I tell you, my friends, I'm not telling you nothing that God hasn't already told you in his word. All I am is a delivery boy. I give you what God said. So if you have a problem with Ogeo Dozier, your problem is not with me. Your problem is with God who sits on the throne. Always remember that because anything I teach you comes from the word of God. Because the crime of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the crime of it, which is come unto me, and is not, and if not, I will know. Back to the 20th verse. And the Lord God, and the Lord said, because the crime, underline the word cry there, because the now, the meaning of this word cry here in Hebrew means this. The scream. A loud piercing cry. A sound that stemmed from the various homosexual activities that were going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy both cities and the flames around them. Are you all hearing this? I want to tell you all a little story. I think back in 2004 or 2005, there was a landmark case in Texas that the U.S. Supreme Court picked up. They should not have bothered that case. They didn't have the jurisdiction over that particular case, but they wanted to make a point. There were two men, a black man and a white man, having sex in an apartment building in Texas. And they were screaming, loud, crying, yelling in the midst of the activity. In so much that the neighbors called the police. The police arrived on the scene. And because of the emergency, they thought it was an emergency, they thought somebody was being murdered up here. They came in and they knocked down the door and found these two men doing their thing. Well, at that time, sodomy was a crime in Texas. Not only in Texas, but throughout almost every state in the Union. It was a crime. 
So they charged him with the crime of sodomy. He went to court. Of course. And the lower court won the case on the state level. The two men appealed the case to the Supreme Court of Texas. And the state won there also. But the United States Supreme Court didn't like their decision. What they did was this. They brought that case up to decide that case. They originally reached into Texas and pulled that, that particular case up because they didn't like the decision of the state. They had no jurisdiction to meddle in that case because as a lawyer, I can tell you this. There is absolutely nothing written in the U.S. Constitution that would constitute the U.S. justices to get involved with a case dealing with same-sex marriage or homosexuality. There's nothing in there to verify or to substantiate or to either make legal homosexuality, which is nothing more than sodomy. Well, they overturned the Texas decision. And when they overturned the Texas decision, this U.S. Supreme Court, do you know what happened? Then, my friend, they repealed every sodomy law in every state. Went off, went off the books. It went away. I know. I used to teach this stuff. I used to teach law to the police officer. I used to teach that particular statute about sodomy. It was on the books. But they wanted to wipe it out. They wanted to legalize sodomy. And they did it. And as you can see, they couldn't wait to get their hands on this same-sex marriage case to rule in favor of it. And when this president came along, I still have the article at home at my house. In 2008, prior to being voted in as president, this president met before homosexuals and promised them that if they elect him, if they vote for him, he will give them everything they want, including same-sex marriage. He lied to you when he said that he evolved. He had never evolved. He was lying when he said he believed that Marriage should be between one man and one woman. He did that just to get your vote the first time around. The second time around, he was in trouble. And he knew that the homosexuals had a lot of money. And he was going to speak to a lot of them. And he sat back and said, I know how I can get their money. I can go back to my original intent, my original decision about this thing. I believe in same-sex marriage. I'll just tell the people that I have evolved. It was his, it was his intention from the very beginning to legalize same-sex marriage. And he didn't stop. He made sure that he chose two women on the U.S. Supreme Court bench that will further this thing for him. He knew what he was doing. He chose a homosexual woman and a very liberal woman and put them on the bench to further his goals. Please look at the word of God again. In Genesis 18, 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Now, very grievous is simply means severe and bad. See, that sin is very, very, very bad. That sin, I want to say something here, and I know some people are going to disagree with me, but, but, but listen, people. The Bible substantiates the fact, this particular verse here, that homosexuality is a greater sin, much greater sin than fornication and adultery. Much greater. Why, preacher? Because, number one, as I said before, it goes against God's original design for man and woman. In other words, you're not talking about people of the opposite sex having sex, which is bad enough by itself if they're not married. But you're talking about two men. And 
there. All over this world. And that how that is how it has been since the beginning of the world. But we get one guy who says that he is going to fundamentally change America. And hasn't he? He has a legacy. Obamacare is his legacy also. Oh, he has been a very successful president. He's gotten everything that he said he was going to get. He can walk around with his head in the air, smiling and grinning in your face like he's all this and that. But the man is the forerunner to the Antichrist. I said it in 2007. I said it in 2008. I still say it today. Amen. He has weakened us morally. And that is what it must be. It must be that kind of atmosphere for the Antichrist to come in. The Antichrist now can show himself. Because even the Antichrist himself will be gay. But look a little further here in Genesis. But look a little further here in Genesis. It also says here in Genesis, it says, and Abraham drew near, sorry about that, uh, the 22nd verse, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood ye before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said to God, he's talking to God, will thy also destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's very important. Will God also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Meaning those who are not homosexuals? Yes, he will. He did it in Sodom and Gomorrah. Why did he destroy the righteous with the wicked? Why did he destroy those who are not homosexual? Why did God rain down fire and brimstone up on these two cities and the plains around? Why? Because the people had become desensitized to the act homosexuality. They have accepted it as a norm. Jesus. And that's where we are today. Jesus. And those who haven't accepted it are on their way to the acceptance of it. Jesus. And more and more and more as the weeks go by, and the months go by, and the years go by, you will see an increase of homosexuality in the earth. Now they have a legal right to teach your children that it's okay to be a homosexual. One percent, two percent, but now applying to be three percent, four percent, five percent, ten percent. Don't you see why God wanted to destroy that in the earth? Because he didn't want it to spread. And that's what we have today. Isn't that right, everyone? It is spreading everywhere. And let's go back to uh, Genesis, if we will, here please, because I want to show you something here again in the book of Genesis, and then I'll be through. Let's go back to Genesis 18, 22. In Genesis 18, 22, in 18, 22, Genesis 18, 22, let's go there. Okay, uh, no, I tell you, let's go back uh, to Leviticus. In Leviticus, 